Another blood red sunset and yet another moon face and still another hundred miles to my next resting place. Driving down the road, eyes on the horizon. Within my car, I'm all alone. But feeling good and feeling strong, knowing that this path I'm on brings me to myself. I'm driving. Hey now, all, I'm Joey C. Welcome back to another episode of Spirit Sherpa. This is the show that helps and encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. With me, as always, is the spirit doctor, Kelly Sparta. Hey, Kelly. Hey, Joey. How you doing? Great. It's a sunny day here and life is good. And I'm coming down off of my post-retreat high and insanity of catching up once I get back. And yeah. I was going to ask you about that. You just came off the Claim Your Gifts retreat, which we've been talking about for a while. So, you know, that's not super evergreen. How did it go? I went amazing. Amazing. I actually got this incredible testimonial from one of my participants saying how safe she felt and how welcome she felt and how awesome it was for her. And we're checking in with everybody and they're all reporting really incredible shifts. It's, it's been really good. And so I'm really excited. And, and at the same time, I'm prepping and launching the the next retreat. Right. And we'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of the episode, give people some information where they can look into that. But I knew that that was something that was going on. So that's great. Yeah. And speaking of things going on, (laughs) we've got an interesting episode as usual today, and we're going to be talking about dreamwalking and lucid dreaming. Yes. This seems almost creepy to me in a way. (laughs) (laughs) Well, people do it automatically a lot. I know it seems almost creepy. And, you know, if you ever watch the TV show Falling Water, it is very creepy in that TV show. (laughs) It's also not terribly wrong. Okay. Uh, Energetically speaking, it's, it's actually right on the money. The practice of dream walking is there are beginner practices and there are advanced practices. And uh, the beginner practice is the lucid dreaming piece. And the advanced practice is the dream walking piece. Everyone can do lucid dreaming. Not everyone can dream walk. Well, what is lucid dreaming? Okay. So good question. Lucid dreaming means that you become aware that you are dreaming in your dream. Okay. And so when you can become aware that you are dreaming, then you have the ability to take over the dream and run it instead of the dream running the experience. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's got a lot of potential, right? Because you're in a dream world, which means that the physical reality doesn't have to exist. So is it just being able to recognize that you're in a dream state? So you sort of take down all of those preconceptions of what is supposed to be? Is that really what lucid dreaming is about? Think about it this way. Okay. Your dreams are an experience of your unconscious. Mm -hmm. And lucid dreaming allows you to, instead of having your unconscious talk to you, it allows you to surf your unconscious is probably a better way of doing it because your unconscious is still informing the process, Mm -hmm. but now your consciousness is interacting with the unconscious. Remember we did the episode on thinking symbolically. Yep. So your unconscious talks in symbols. That's it. That's all it understands. That's why your dreams are so freaking weird, right? It's because (laughs) it's talking symbolically. It's not literal. It is not literal. Yes. So you have to learn how to, think symbolically if you're going to effectively navigate within the world of the dream state because you are interacting with your unconscious mind. Okay. And so the practice of doing that, it's a very simple practice. It takes a while, Okay. but the practice is to go to sleep with the intention of becoming conscious in your dreams. That seems way simpler than it is though. Well, it it is that simple (laughs) and it takes a while for it to penetrate to your subconscious mind. Okay. So for most people, it takes, you know, a week or two of doing it and before they have their first lucid dream. Now, if you happen to be like my husband and like me, where you wake up and then you go back to sleep in the night, Mm -hmm. you have a much better chance of getting into lucid dreaming faster if you set that intention when you go back to sleep, because oftentimes when we go back to sleep, we go back into a REM state. And so we're closer to the state that we want to be in. Yeah. 
if you wake up in the middle of the night, you go lucid dream and go back to sleep, right? <laughs> so I don't recommend setting alarms for yourself because that can be a little disturbing. But, but if you happen to catch yourself or if you wake up in the morning and you're, you don't have to get up yet, go back to sleep because the end of your sleep cycle is when you REM sleep most often. And so when, when you go back to sleep in the morning, say, I want to lucid dream and then just go back to sleep. Don't focus on it too hard or it'll drag you out of sleep. Okay. <laughs> There's an art to it, you know, to staying in the dream state. It's that staying in that sort of alpha beta state of awareness where you're just sort of half on the dream state and just go, right, I'd like to be lucid dreaming now right. and then go back in, you know, just as a suggestion. So we're talking about this being sort of the beginning stage, the lucid dreaming component, but what's the value for a person to do, whether it's lucid dreaming or dream walking? Where's, what's the value to somebody to be able to extend themselves into that? that realm well it's cool <laughs> <laughs> new toys <laughs> new toys my people love my new toys right you guys exactly. love toys right i know you do yes so let's start with it's cool yeah. when you lucid dream you have the ability to do a bunch of different things that you can't do in physical reality so mm -hmm. you could play out experiences with other people that you can't play out in real life you know, okay. so if you want to have that conversation with your boss about the raise yep. and you're nervous about it, you could conjure your boss into <laughs> your dream state and just be like, oh, look. And when I say conjure, I don't mean conjure in the, the technical conjure terms. I'm talking not actually in. pulling them into your dream. You're Correct. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, you could pull that person's image up in your mind from your unconscious, from your experience of them, right. and then have the conversation with them. And your unconscious mind has picked up a lot more information than your conscious mind has about that person. So when you're having that interaction with them, it is likely going to be exactly what that interaction is going to be when you get there. So you could like try it over and over and over again until you get exactly Exactly right. You okay. could fly, which again goes back to cool. Cool. You can remote view. Okay. You know, that's something you can do from that state as well. It's often much less hampered by your conscious mind because you are dreaming. Yep. You are conscious, but you're still asleep. Yep. So you're, a lot of your conscious limitations are sort of lowered because you're only sort of conscious. When you remote view yeah. from that lucid state, lucid dream state, are the images you're getting from the remote viewing more symbolic than they would be if you were in a conscious remote viewing sort of state? They can be. Okay. It depends on how deep in your dream state you are. And okay. so that's part of the practice of being in them. Yep. Is recognizing where you're crossing from reality into dream state and so on, right? Yep. And then the advanced version of lucid dreaming, which... Let me, let me state this very, very explicitly. Dreamwalking, if it is uninvited, if you do not have permission, is a violation. I'm assuming dreamwalking is more than just in your own head. Yes. Okay. So I wanted to say that out loud before I said what it was, before you get any ideas of, oh, I'm going to go do this. I want you to recognize that dreamwalking without permission is a violation. I would put it worse than rape. Wow. Okay. Because you are digging around in somebody else's subconscious mind and can implant things in their heads. And there's all kinds of shit that can go sideways with this. So I, I want to say out loud, don't do this without permission. Okay. You do it to the wrong person, you're going to get your ass handed to you. Well, and even with permission, it sounds like it's something don't do without knowing what you're doing. Because from what you said, you can you can make some mistakes in there. Well, yeah. And this is what I'm saying is that if you're working with a partner, mm -hmm. you know, if you guys are both practicing lucid dreaming together and you're practicing all of this stuff together and you decide, I want to dream walk, maybe we'll meet in the middle. Right. Let's meet in the middle. So when you're dream walking, what you're actually doing is you're walking through the collective unconscious. Oh. So that unto itself has a little bit of risk. Yep. So again, I say, this is not something you want to do if you don't know how to protect yourself. And this is not something you want to do if you are unsure about what you're doing. And this is not something you want to do if you're not clear that you can find your way home. Right. It's like you're living in a subdivision and just walking through everybody's backyards to get to your exactly. neighbor's house. Yep. Okay. You know, don't get shot for trespassing. Exactly. Right? Okay. So when you're dreamwalking, you're walking in the collective unconscious. Now, 
Initially, what you may want to do if you're going to experiment with this, and again, I would say really get solid in yourself, really get clear on your ability to handle yourself in unknown situations and an energetic path, Yeah. really get clear on how symbolically thinking works because when shit comes at you in the dream world, it comes at you symbolically, which means that it could be an atom bomb coming in your direction. And you need to know that you should not buy into that or you will believe that it has killed you and that would be bad. So, you know, this is what I'm saying. Yeah. You need to understand and you need to be really clear in many, many ways about how the unconscious mind works and how symbolically things happen in the unconscious and that sort of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So when I say this is dangerous, I want you to get capital D dangerous out of it. It is a capital D dangerous concept. And so I'm not going to teach you a lot about it, but I want to make you aware of it because, you know, there are people who are dream walkers out there. And so you should be aware of them. Mm -hmm. If you're in a dream state and somebody appears to you in a way that is, it feels more solid than everything else, that may be somebody else coming to visit you in your dreams. Okay. You know, some of us will do this automatically visiting our loved ones. Yep. One of the things that you hear about a lot is that when somebody dies, they'll come to somebody in their dreams to say goodbye. Yep. Right? Yep. Because we're easier to access at that level. And as a ghost, it's easier for them to to meet us on the the collective unconscious rather than in the physical world. Okay. When you have one of those dreams, you know that that was the actual person and not just a dream version of them. Right. You know that. And so if you experience somebody in your dreams and they feel really solid and they're still in the physical world, they're probably there actually visiting you. Cool. And we do this unconsciously all the time. We Mm -hmm. visit our friends. We visit our loved ones. Yep. And so, you know, from that level, because it's an unconscious level, we're sort of surfing in the unconscious and we're not really, there's not really a lot going on there. You just sort of slap it in and going, Hey, how's it going? <laughs> or, you know, your friend went, oh, I'm having a nightmare. I need you. And you go, I'm here. What? <laughs> that, that can happen. And you'll have people wake up and be like, I dreamed about you last night or, Oh, I dreamed about you too. Or sometimes oftentimes it's the person who, who needed the person who dreamed about them. I get people telling me that all the time. They're like, Oh my God, I dreamed about you. Yeah. And I don't have any memory of it because I was sleeping. I don't do a lot of dream walking. It's not my thing, yeah. but I don't remember it. And that's often the case is that the person who felt like they needed you there will, will see you there, but not necessarily the other person sees it. Right. So if you're doing it consciously and you're doing it with a partner, then you guys can agree to meet on the collective unconscious. So like go to 7-Eleven or Starbucks or, you know, (laughs) because the collective unconscious includes physical reality. All the things exist there. And hey, I'll meet you at Starbucks. Okay, I'll meet you there. As long as you both know the place, the energy of the location, then you can go there regardless of what it looks like. Right. And the interesting thing about the collective unconscious is that franchises, because they are specifically designed to be identical, Yeah, you could meet at Starbucks, quote unquote, Starbucks, and it doesn't have to be a physical location. You can meet at the morphic field of a collective unconscious Starbucks store. And it isn't a store that's in physical reality. It is the construct out of which all stores are created that you're meeting on. That's a franchise location I want to buy into. <laughs> <laughs> cool though, right? You're right. Because it exists in the collective unconscious. Everyone knows when you say Starbucks, they know what you mean by Starbucks. Exactly. Right? Same thing. So, you know, that sort of thing is something that you can do. If you want to go walking in the collective unconscious, I would be very specific about where you want to go. And I would be very careful about being specific because I know we have a lot of fixers out there in the world and they're like, I'm going to fix the problems in the Middle East, or I'm going to fix and make it world peace, or I'm going to fix this. Be very careful because there are people out there who do not want it fixed and they know more than you and do not imagine that they are not running in the places that you think you're going to try and fix. So this is not something for a beginner to mess with. Don't go out and try and fix shit. 
<laughs> okay? <laughs> I'm just being really clear because there are more layers of work to be done than you, one, than you can be aware of if you're new. Right. And two, then you have thought through and other people have spent much more time thinking about it than you have, I promise you. Okay. So they're far more prepared and they've likely laid traps for you. Okay. So be very careful and just don't go there until you feel like you are an actual elder and other people have acknowledged you as an elder. Yeah. <laughs> oh, our egos get all puffed up. Oh, I'm an elder. I've had people tell me I'm enlightened and I'm going, not from where I'm standing, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, are you? Okay. <laughs> So, but all right. Until you've gotten to the, the status of elder in your community where other people agree with that, don't even try to fix that stuff on that sort of level. Right. Even as an elder, that is hard ass stuff. Yeah. I want to be really clear with you about it. So if you're gonna go dreamwalking in the collective unconscious, there there are some things that would be interesting to look at. But again, it's a symbolic process. You're thinking symbolically, right? So an interesting thing, again, don't fix. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Something you could learn from by observing and not interacting. Let me be clear. Observing and not interacting okay. is to look at the interaction of men and women on the collective unconscious. And that's a really interesting dynamic to look at and to see symbolically play out on the unconscious level. And you're going to get the concept. I'm looking at gross concepts, right? right? So you could look at your own family dynamic on the collective unconscious. And you could see your entire ancestral line on the collective unconscious because we live in the eternal moment of now and it all exists right now. Yeah. Front and back. What's that? Front, front and back. Front yes. And back. I was just going to say that. So you can look <laughs> forward in time. You can look back in time. Yep. You know, you can look at your entire family dynamic and your ancestral line. Mm -hmm. That would be an interesting to look thing to look at. Yeah. You could go and look at your company that you work for and see what the company dynamic looks like. Yep. You could look at your relationship to food or your relationship to money or your relationship to love or your relationship to, you know, whatever. And that could be very informative. And that's an interesting one because that's not a relationship between individuals in that case. I uh, think you're looking at the concepts of food or money or love or those and how you engage with those concepts versus with exactly. a person or thing within those concepts. Exactly. Very cool. If you want to really get a feel, I mean, we have a lot of people in the spiritual community who are all like anti-rich people, anti-money, yeah. anti which by the way, guys, you've got to stop that shit. Yep. You really do. If you don't stop eschewing money, you will continue bleeding power yep. to the people who have it. Yep. Money makes you more of who you already are. I love T. Harvecker's statement and not all of his stuff is, is stuff I would, would recommend, but that, that statement is right on the money, yeah. pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> money makes you more of who you already are. It is an amplifier. It is not inherently a problem. Right. It makes you more of who you already are. So it, we need to get our heads around that. And maybe we need to do an episode around money. Yeah. The upshot is that you can look at the morphic field of anything. So if you're doing work with a particular God or goddess, you can go and look at the morphic field of that God or goddess. I would really recommend doing that before you begin your work with them because <laughs> you want to know what all's in it. Right. And working with God, the big G O D that one would be an interesting one to look at. Don't interact. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me. Don't interact. It's got a lot of crap in there, but it would be an interesting one to look at. Yeah. This is the sort of thing that you can do on the collective unconscious. It holds the archetypes for our world. And it sounds like to me that you're suggesting that we, at least in the early stages, that we treat the collective unconscious more like Netflix than like an immersive type event where we can look at it, we can watch it, we can rewind it, we can fast forward it, we can do all of these things, but we're not necessarily in the show. We're simply yes. watching how it yes, exists. Exactly. Binge the Netflix. <laughs> don't become an actor in it. Right. Yes. Okay. That, don't, don't become a director or a writer or an actor and just, <laughs> you know, just binge it. Excellent. Right? 
Um, and that's a great, great metaphor for that. Thank yeah. you. And that's thinking symbolically right there. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> right there in evidence, how to think symbolically. Thank you very much, Joey Z. So we've talked quite a bit about the concepts of dreamwalking and lucid dreaming as an entryway into that. Um, some of the values and benefits. Are there ways beyond just try it out? Because you said, you know, don't necessarily do these things. Don't necessarily directly engage until you reach that state of elder or mastery. Mastery. Thank you. But how do you get there? Is it just time and experience and practice? Or are there things that people can do or read? Or Well, a lot of it's time and experience and practice. Yeah. And Again, it's that thinking symbolically thing. Yep. I can't I can't stress too much exactly the need to do that. The best way to to learn to think symbolically is just to read a lot of stuff. Yeah. And you know, you start to see themes that happen across different things. You can see those themes in video as well, mm-hmm. uh, in movies and TV shows. But I find that watching is a much less immersive experience than reading yeah. because it's not engaging you in your head. Your creativity isn't triggered as much in yeah, watching. Yeah, you're more passive. Yeah. Yeah. So I, re- I really recommend reading over watching for that purpose mm-hmm. unless you're in a class that's supposed to teach you themes, yeah. which that's a great way to learn too. There are, there are entire college courses that do themes of movies and themes of storylines and things like that. Uh, If you watch The Power of Myth with Joseph Campbell, it's an old show from the 80s. Any Joseph Campbell book is good, but The Power of Myth is amazing for helping you to start to think symbolically. It's really good for that. Mm -hmm. Stealing Fire from the Gods. I don't remember the author's name, but, you know, Google it. You'll find it. (laughs) They're really good for helping you learn to think symbolically. Okay. The more you can develop your ability to see things from a symbolic perspective, the more you can navigate magically, the more you can do better at doing ritual, the more you can do better at dreamwalking and lucid dreaming and understanding your dreams themselves, dream interpretation, yep. understanding how people are interacting with the world. So if you're a coach or a healer, mm-hmm. when you understand how the world works symbolically, when people are talking to you, you will recognize some of the symbolic thinking in the ways that they're talking. And that's going to give you a whole nother layer of work that you can do with them. It's a whole language unto yeah. itself. Which is why it's important to train your mind in that way of thinking symbolically in order to exactly. be able to exist in yeah. that in that realm. All of these things and more are ways that you can improve your ability. And then ultimately, if you want to be able to step into the mastery level, part of it's about really being able to own yourself mm-hmm. and feel confident in your ability to protect yourself in any scenario. And that means going back to the conversation we we have periodically about getting solid in your sense of self yeah, and being able to be confident in your abilities, mm-hmm. right? So you've got to solidify that energetic container, which allows you to be solid in, in your sense of self. You've got to develop the ability to focus and come to stillness in yourself to create something. Mm-hmm. And you have to have that be reflexive, like it's just automatic. It's like, I need to be still in focus. Boof, it's there. Yeah. You don't have to breathe deeply and sink in and think about it. No, it's got to be like, boom, right there. Yep. And that allows you to be in a state where you can be able to respond to anything that shows up in front of you. I, I want to ask one more question. I know we're getting to time here, but I want you just mentioned talking about being solid in, in that container. And I'm not sure. And that's why I'm going to ask you this. If somebody's going to try lucid dreaming or dreamwalking or something like that, should they do it in a safe space that they've set up? Or does that sort of constrict their ability to go outside of themselves, which is in lucid or certainly in dreamwalking is what you intend to do? Yeah, your your container. <laughs> this is going to scare some people. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good. Protective <laughs> containers that exist for everything else don't really work for the collective unconscious. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, which is why dreamwalking is, you know, I'm like, nah. Yeah. You'd have to do a different type of protection to protect yourself at that level. I've never actually constructed that. Yeah. <laughs> so I have to actually sit down and think about how to do it. Yeah. And of course, now I'm feeling 15 people emailing me right now going, please. <laughs> <laughs> But in terms of setting like a circle or a temple or something like that that we've talked about in the past, you couldn't do that because it would it wouldn't work in that space. 
No. Okay. It's not going to work in that space for two reasons. One is that you can't walk into the collective unconscious if you cut yourself off from it. Right. And two, those particular things that we've talked about wouldn't work in that construct anyway. Okay. You'd have to create a completely separate version of your security system yeah, in order of. for that to work. And even then, uh, because reality is malleable, the ability for it to stay solid is going to be dependent upon your ability to hold it solid while engaging. And my Trekkie brain is just going into personal shields that are the weapons are phasing in it again, the same phase as the shields. Therefore, the shields are irrelevant kind right. of thing. <laughs> so, yeah, it, yeah. everything shielding. Exactly. You know? <laughs> everything is everything is malleable. The timeline is malleable. <laughs> yeah. So it's just like, mm, yeah, it's less about. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd have to think about that. <laughs> I'm glad that we wrapped up the episode on a really complex question that, that, <laughs> that completely derailed everything. That's fantastic. Hey, awesome. We love to, we love to stump, stump the expert, right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Game show called that, wasn't there? Yeah, I think it was stump the chump. Oh, great. <laughs> we're, not, we're not going to go with that chump. one. You're not the chump. You're not the chump. <laughs> I'm fine with being the chump. It's okay. <laughs> Oh, boy. All right. Well, let's wrap up here because, you know, this this is interesting. But like you said, there may be more here that we can put into bonus contents or into other episodes. There's a lot of cool stuff here. And knowing, as Kelly said, she felt into about 15 people reaching out and emailing her. And if you do have questions or things that you want to ask that have come from this or other topics that came out of this that you thought of as you were listening, like, oh, what about this? What about that? You can email Kelly. Kelly, K-E-L-L-E, at kellysparta.com, and you can put all your questions there. You're also getting questions from a whole bunches of different places now. Your Instagram, Facebook, it, you, people are coming at you from everywhere, right? Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, very, very yeah. cool. Yeah, and people have actually figured out that, hey, you know, the person, Mary, who has taken over my Instagram feed actually has a freaking clue, <laughs> and the Instagram is actually looking pretty decent now, so, you know. Yep, absolutely. So, you know, remember when I said, you know, well, it's better. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And if you'd like to get on to kellysparta.com and subscribe to Kelly's mailing list, you can get all of the cool things that Kelly is putting out there. They're more time relevant, right? They're not as evergreen as what we talk about here, or at least try to talk about here. If you're on the mailing list, you get things like tomorrow, before this episode airs, <laughs> tomorrow you'll get notice about the the retreats that are coming out in September. We've got two yeah. different retreats coming out in September. And so that you would get notice of that before everyone else. And the yeah. reason that's going to be relevant is that the first four tickets of any event are $100 off. Yep. And so when you're on the mailing list, you'll find out about that sooner than you will if you are coming from the podcast. Yeah. So you'll get a better chance of getting one of those first four tickets. And let's talk about those retreats for a second while we have a second. Now, we've mentioned Claim Your Gifts you're doing in Virginia with yeah. the September. That's early September, right? The first weekend? 7th and 8th, yeah. yeah. Okay. And what was the other one? What other retreat? The other one is Expand Your Impact. So we actually – so you guys have heard about the year-long program, the Mastering Spiritual Evolution program, right? Yeah. There are three retreats that are supplemental to that program that can be done either as part of the program or separate from the program. And you can do them either all together to get amplified results because they build on one another, mm -hmm. or you can do them individually so that they're, because they're each a unit unto themselves. Okay. So, so you can go in and just do one and it's a one and done and you're complete you know, unto that process. So there are three retreats in the series. Uh, the first one is claim your gifts. Mm -hmm. The second one is expand your impact. And the third one is Own Your Power. Okay. And so we're running Claim Your Gifts in Falls Church, September 7th and 8th. And we're running Expand Your Impact in Boston, September 28th and 29th. Okay. The two events build on one another. Mm -hmm. And the Own Your Power event, when we schedule that, will also build on that. Okay. So all good. All good. And everybody can get this information on kellysparta.com of the yes. upcoming events and things like that. Yeah, if you click on the events button at the very top of the page, it, if you click on it instead of hover over it, it actually takes you to an events calendar. Sweet. And I'm currently in the process of fixing it so that it shows you the list instead of the calendar because 
the list is more efficient. If I haven't been able to fix it, then you'll have to click on the right where it says list <laughs> and, it'll, and it'll show you the list. But, but it's all um, there anyway. It's all there regardless. Yes, perfect. All right. And also, we invite you to subscribe and rate the podcast, Spirit Sherpa, wherever it is that you listen to your podcast. Again, you're getting a lot of feedback from people from a lot of different places who are interested in your programs that are coming from listening to the podcast, which has been pretty exciting. It is. It is. I actually had somebody sign up this morning from, you know, the other side of the world. Yeah. So that was freaking awesome. And you're not doing a lot of direct marketing out there in the other side of the world, I'm assuming. Uh, not at all, <laughs> actually. <laughs> so so, that so makes- yeah, Cassie, Cassie uh, checked in this morning and uh, she's, she's just said, I just started listening to your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the email sitting in my inbox right now. So yeah, she's in Holland. Hi, Cassie. Hi, Cassie. Welcome. (laughs) Wow, she's giving me a lot of information. This is going to be awesome. I may use that for the next episode. Perfect. There you go. You see, folks, that Kelly takes all this stuff and she incorporates it into what we're talking about here. I do. I do. All right. So before we head out here, is there anything else you want to say to wrap up? Fly. Free. Be free. Dream. Dream well. Dream often. Dream creatively. Dream safely. (laughs) Yes, dream safely. (laughs) (laughs) All right, folks, that's all that we have for this week. But be sure to join us next time as Kelly adds another chapter into your guide to energy, magic and the spirit world. I'm Joey C here with Kelly Sparta, and you have been listening to Spirit Sherpa. So long, everyone. Bye. Each mile I travel over 13,000 now, so I leave behind a little fear. Spirit Sherpa is the sole property of Kelly Sparta Enterprises and is distributed under Creative Commons BY-NC-ND 4.0 license. For more information about this licensing, please go to creativecommons.org. Any requests for deviations to this licensing should be sent to K-E-L-L-E at K-E-L-L-E-S-P-A-R-T-A dot com. That's Kelly at KellySparta.com. To sign up or to get more information, on the programs, offerings, and services referenced in this episode, please go to kellysparta.com. This episode of Spirit Trippa has been produced by Honu Voice Productions. <laughs> <laughs>